today I want to show you how to make a drop cheek rectangular elbow. To do this uh, layout we have to use the triangulation method of pattern development. We will be using parallel lines to lay out the wrappers and basic geometric principles as part of the development on the sloped cheek. I am the draft doctor and this is the drop cheek elbow. Here's our shop ticket today. We have a 10 by 5 to 5 by 10 flat on top rectangular elbow so it's a transitioning elbow and it has an 8 inch finished throat uh, I notice here it has S and drive and S and drive on both ends so if I come down and make a short little sketch to help myself out here I find out that it's flat on the top here then I find out that the bottom it's going down five inches. Five and five is ten, and ten. We also find that we have a working radius of seven and a half. I want to have a finished radius with an S and drive connection, meaning my working line will be a half inch short of my finish line in that case, so I will be using a radius of seven and a half inches. Next, let's look at the required math. Uh, to calculate our throat stretch out, we're going to use a calculation of 1.57 times our working radius, which we found to be 7.5. So 1.57 times 7.5 comes to 11.775, and our width would be 10 inches. Uh, this is with no seams. I'm going to lay this out with no seams. If you need to add seams, we'll add them on to the raw pattern after. So there's my stretch out, 11.775 by 10 inches. My heel stretch out is going to be 1.57 times my heel radius plus the straight. Now the heel radius is found quite simply by adding up the working radius here with the short side. My heel radius is 5 plus 7.5 which is going to give me 12.5. So 1.57 times 12.5 plus my straight. Straight is very simple to figure out as well too. It's the large dimension minus the small dimension it will give me my straight, which is five inches in this case. And when I do this all together, I get 24.625 by 10. Once again, no seams. If I'm going to uh, triangulate the falling cheek on this drop cheek rectangular transitioning elbow, the first thing for me to do is to lay out in this case, I'm going to lay out the top cheek since it is flat. If both cheeks were falling, I would have to lay out a third cheek, which would be flat, so I could get some dimensions in which to triangulate from. So, quite simply, what I've done up here is I've laid out a quadrant, and I've swung an arc with my working radius. Now, on top of my working radius, I added my 10-inch dimension and my 5-inch dimension, which represents the openings on our top cheek. Now I'm just going to scratch this line very lightly straight forward and we know that's going to be 5 inches. My next step is to take my heel radius which what I said before was my throat radius plus my working radius and we'll set this up here. Throat radius plus my working radius. Now I'm going to subtract that from my 10 inch line. And what that does now is gives me my heel radius point. I'm just going to tag that HRP, heel radius point. From that heel radius point, now I'm just going to turn my bow compass around, double check that. I'm going to double check up here. I should come tangent to that line. That's pretty darn nice. And we're going to bring that all the way down. This now is the stretch out pattern for my top cheek. Now you'll notice that the top, it's a mirror image of my shop tickets. That's so that I get an inside pattern. I'm just going to put an X there to show that. Now, what we want to do next is Divide this 
cheek up and use this top cheek, the inside of this top cheek, as a working drawing to produce our bottom cheek, which has a fall to it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is divide this fitting up. Now, I want to find the midpoint of both my heel and throat, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. Now, to find the midpoint of my throat, quite simply, I can go 45 degrees from my apex point, and I now find the midpoint of my throat wrapper. If I want to find the midpoint of my heel wrapper, it's a little different here now because we have this here straight that we need to accommodate and the midpoint has to be not on the curve and not on this from the straight. It has to come from the corner to the corner. I need the midpoint of that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an educated guess, I suppose, and take a distance that is what I think is half. I could go somewhere about there, and let's just double check that. Oh my. It happens to be exact, but what I normally do is put a little arc there, come to the other side, put a little arc here, and what I do then is take the difference between those two. In this case, we happen to be right on. So we're going to call that the middle of the whole heel. It has to be the whole heel. Now, if I think about my bottom cheek, it is falling five inches. Which means from, from this plane right here on the 10 inch opening to this opening here, this pattern is going down five inches. Now, the reason I drew drew these into halves is because at this point it will be half of that five inches so this would represent a two and a half inch fall from here and this midpoint would represent a two and a half inch fall from here on the other side a two and a half inch fall from this midpoint to here and from this midpoint to here in essence what we're going to do is we're going to triangulate over half the fall and build the fitting one half at a time. Now, here's another little interesting tidbit that I'm going to throw in here. This line is a true length. And that's part of the reason why this all works so well for us. If I have half the fall here and half the fall here, then this line in between them has to be a true length. I have a true length here, and I have a true length here. Now, we're ready to label this, and I like to label these in the order that we find them. I'm going to go A, and then I'm going to go B. Next, I'm going to find C, which is up here. Then I'm going to find D. From C and D, I'm going to find point E in this corner. From there, I'm going to find point F. And finally, the point G, which is at the end of the straight. Last point we're going to find. I'm going to put a circle on that because it's special. If I have to triangulate over half the fall, then I would have to set up a true length triangle for triangulating on. And let's just do that now. Got a nice spot right here. So, this height will represent the length that I pull off of my plan view. And what I'll do at the base of that is we'll lay out half the fall. And half of the fall in this case is two and a half inches. Now I am using the 3 8 scale. So two and a half inches. Right there is half the fall. And 
let's just mark one half full. Next, if I want to have my bottom panel, my bottom panel has to look exactly like this shop ticket. In other words, it has to be a mirror image of my top panel. My top panel is flat. We're going to lay out the bottom panel. If I want a mirror image of it, then what I'm going to do is label this point B and this point A. I've gone ahead and measured this 10 inch dimension. So now I have B and A. From B and A, we're going to start to triangulate now. This is where she gets a little bit fun. If I tank my plan length of B to point C and I plot that on my true length triangle because I know that's not a true length it is falling two and a half inches looks like I gotta raise that up a little bit Now, that would make the true length of B to C this long. And we'll dial that into our point. Now I'm always going to put my poker part into the two and a half inch so that I can cross these off as I measure them. And there was B to C. Another good idea is to document B, C. I'm going to zoom out a bit. My apologies. Now you're going to see I've already laid out some of these uh, heel wrappers for us, and we'll talk about them in a minute. At any rate, just to rehash this, I took my plan length of B to C, placed it on my true length triangle, and then measured it from my two and a half inch fall. I'm going to double check that since I set this down. Exactly, almost where I want it to be. So from B, on this arc, I will find C. Are you going to use A to find C now? And my plan length, or my top view, my top panel, has a plan length of A to C right, right there. Not a true length once again. This should be very close. And there's my AC. True length of AC is going to go from my two and a half to my AC, which is just a bit longer. And now from A. I find point C. Now, A, B, C, next I'm going to do is find D. We talked about this earlier. Since these both represent half the fall, the length from C to D has to be a true length. If it's a true length, I do not need to triangulate it. I'm just going to take it from C and I'm going to swing an arc in the direction of my throat, which would be between A and where D is going to be found. Somewhere on this arc, from A, I'm going to find D. Here is my plan length now of A to D. Off my top panel, A to D is there. There's A, D. Here's the true length of A to D. So, from A, 
I have now found point D. This radius is going to come in handy because this true length is also the true length of D to F. Now, because I split this in half, D to F is the same as A to D. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take point D, I'm going to swing an arc over here for future, and I'm going to call it uh, DF. We'll get back to that a little later we're going to use it to find F. <coughs> I have C and D and I'm going to use C and D now to find point E. First of all, from C to E is this long on my plan or my top panel. Here is the plan length of it on my true length triangle same as BC, how about that? And now I'm going to get the actual true length of it by triangulating over the two and a half inch fall and I need to make that slightly bigger there we go oh, if I get lost it's pretty easy A, B, C, D, oh, I'm looking for E E is going to be somewhere on this arc I don't know where My, I'd be careful here. Somewhere on this arc, I gotta swing that from C because that's where I was looking from. From D now, I'm gonna take the plan view of E. One of the reasons why I've got this labeled like that is so an old guy like me can catch his mistakes before it gets too late. Here now is the true length. D. to E. I have now found point E. E has three. Now remember when I went, swung the arc that represented AD as well as DF? I can now find, I've used D to find F on that arc, now I can use the true length of E to F, Oop, wrong way, of E to F, and this is a true length, it is perpendicular to our plane of vision, and there it is right there, a true length, so now from E, I'm going to locate point F. And there's point F. Okay, now we need to connect these with an arc and these with an O. Oh, we don't have point G yet. Hmm. How am I going to find point G? Well, if I take a look at uh, my working drawing as well as any trans cheek elbow, I will know that this angle at the top has to be 90 degrees. E or G E F or F E G has to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to lay that down right on my E and F. And I'm going to use my other triangle to extend this 90 degrees. Okay. Now on that line is point G. Here's where we need to look elsewhere to get the actual length of G. You see this point here G and E is a true length on my plan view. It is five inches long. However, if I lay out my heel, 
and I take a look at my heel and I've got it partially here so you can see it. We're going to get to it once I've shown you this. Here is the slope. Focus this. I took the liberty of laying out the heel part here, and I'm just going to explain it to you real quick. If I take a look at my shop ticket over here, I can see that I have 10 by 5. In other words, if I'm looking at the inside of the heel wrapper here, to the left is my five inches. So I laid out my calculated stretch out, which was 24.625, and here it is 24 and 5 eighths. And we laid out a nice 90 degrees. Coming down from there, I come down five inches on the left to make sure I have an inside pattern. I come down 10 inches on the right. Make sure I have an inside pattern. Now, here's my 5 inches of straight that is represented on my working drawing right here. Now, this 5 inches of straight is a true length at the top, but at the bottom, here is my true length. And this is where I find my point G. This is the true length of EG. Therefore, quite simply, I'm just going to take my bow compass and I'm going to pull the length of EG off of my heel wrapper. And from there now, I am going to find point G. There we go. We have G. This is where the basic uh, geometric principles come into play. I now have to connect A, D, and F with an arc. Hmm. If I want to draw an arc or find a radius point common to three points, I need to bisect them. So I'm going to bisect both of these by using a radius that's greater than half the distance between and I'll find the intersection points from both and here I'll find from F the intersection points from both Now with my straight edge, I will connect intersection point with intersection point right there. And we will just lightly bring that down here. And then I'm going to take these intersection points from my other bisection and very carefully bring these down here. What I've done is found a throat radius point. Now using this throat radius point, I'm going to pick a radius that is equal to radius point to A. And since we bisected, all these points should land on the same circle. And there we have um, our throat laid out. Now I have to do the same with the heel, but it's very important that I remember this. This heel 
has to be divided between C and G and B and C, not C E. C E is not part of the arc. If you divide C and E and bring that arc around, you're going to end up with an atrocious lump in your fitting that is obviously not going to work for you. So I'm going to have to use two different radiuses this time to do this. And I want to try and keep my work separate from the layout that I did for the throw. And I like to do a little thing like this now. I've already laid out my throat, so the ones with the circles are going to represent my heel. Now once again, I'm going to pick a radius that works larger than half, and we will bisect C and B. Put an arc, put an arc, and I don't know if I made that first one long enough. Yes, I did. Put an arc and an arc. Let's draw these in to find our heel radius point. Mm -hmm. Hope that's going to do it for me. Yeah. I'm going to draw that down there. My other radius point is the circles that I didn't want to get confused with. i bring that down to here, and now I have found my heel radius point. Now, with any luck at all, I will swing this arc. We will have the bottom panel of our drop cheek elbow. kind of like exactly what we want to see. So I'm just going to draw that in and it comes tangent right there. And there now is our falling cheek. And here is how we double check. F should always be in front of E. And there it is. Now the reason for that is because they are both falling. Although they are both falling the same amount, they're falling the same amount over greater distances, which means the hypotenuse grows less on the larger distance than it does on the shorter distance. And you can see that in the triangle here, as opposed to one that might be on the heel. Darkening my EF. And we're going to show you how this has to be formed. If I take the triangle, B, A, C, and I'm just going to draw that in like that. And I'm going to draw in another line from F to C. This panel is going, and if we look up here on my wrapper, it's going down five inches. And that is from my 10 inch side here, my 5 by 10 up here. So it's going down 5 inches this way. Down 5 inches. Now, if I want that to go down 5, then I'm going to have to break this down 5. And then to get it back to where it needs to be at the end of it all, I'm going to go break up five inches. We use a common point in the heel. That way the heel travels smooth through its location here. And the throat drops nice and smooth from A to F on the throat. next step is to add my seams. Now, quite simply, I have to add an inch to each edge. I have to add an inch for my S and drive. I have to add, add an inch for S and drive. I need to add an inch for S and drive. One inch for the S and drive. Also at the top of my throat, 
one inch, one inch. Now it's a half an inch to my finish line, but it's a one inch to my material line. And quite often I have fellas asking me to put on the seams and show all of the notching that is involved. So that's what we're going to do in this case. I've got one inch on my transverse connections all the way around. Uh, I'm not going to duplicate it on all of them just because it's going to make it too long. I need a one inch Pittsburgh, female Pittsburgh, on my wrapper for a longitudinal seam. So we're going to mark one inch on the top and bottom there. And let's get a triangle and draw this stuff in. Now, I'm just going to bring that a little bit towards us here again. There we go. Now, I have a finish line. I have a material line. Here on my throat, I have a material line. And I have a finish line. Now, proper notching. From my working line here, I'm going to come 90 degrees out to my finish line. From my working line here, I want to come 90 degrees out to my finish line. From there, I want to notch from my working line to my finish line at 45 degrees. This is a standard notch comes off any plasma table, any computer aided design system is going to give you this little 45 degree notch and uh, designers believe and I believe too that it is used to aid in the installation and the fitting of a drive clip onto this when you're in the field. So there's my S and drive connection on the end. Now, if I want to lose my shit, next we want to put in our longitudinal female Pittsburgh. So I'm going to line up the one inch marks that I added on to the raw edge or the working line and I'm just going to extend that through. And here's how this works. This is an acute angle, meaning it's less than 90. If I want to notch this properly, what I would do is duplicate that angle. Now most guys are going to do this by eye. But if you're in my class, you got to do it exactly right. So I'm going to make an arc that equalizes both legs of that angle. And now what I want to do is duplicate this angle on the other side of this leg. So I'm going to measure the cord length of that angle, duplicate it here, and then I'm just going to simply plot it here. Where these two points intersect, I've duplicated the angle and I now have my notch. So there is the proper notch for the acute side of this transition. My one inch at the top. Basically, all I need to do is go 90 degrees to my finish line, and there's my notch there. And likewise on this end, I'm going to go 90 degrees to my finish line, because this is an acute angle. Well, not that one is. This is an acute angle, and if it's an acute angle, what I want to do is I want to go 90 degrees to my finish line, which is right there, 90 degrees. And draw the transverse connector on this edge now. Here we have our 
finish line. Here we have our material line. And we are going to go now 90 degrees out from our working line, 90 degrees out from our working line. And then we're going to notch that off at 45 degrees. And at 45 degrees, finish up my object line here. And there is the heel wrapper. Duplicate those pits, female Pittsburghs on my throat wrapper. I have a shop instruction to roll this 90 degrees and the X marks the inside. In other words, I'm rolling it the inside away from my X. Here I'm rolling it towards my X. This is 90 degrees. I've also marked my 5 inch straight. I have 10 by 5, meaning that this is S and drive. I have 5 by 10, meaning this is drive and S. I have to have the exact same allowance. on my cheeks. So I gotta come 90 degrees and I gotta come 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna estimate this in this point in time. 45, 45 here. And we'll darken that in and you'll see that I have one inch straight from my working line to my material line and the midpoint of that is my finish line which gives me the eight and a half inch throat. and connect the dots this fitting also requires a male Pittsburgh so from my heel radius point quite simply I'm going to add my 3 sixteenths of an inch for an easy edge and I'm going to say right now this is not the scale and I'll swing that up to my point G and I'm going to take my throat radius point and I'm going to subtract a female Pittsburgh allowance which would be 3 sixteenths of an inch in an easy edge and I'm going to swing that up to my F line or my finish point Three sixteenths to three sixteenths. There is my point G, and there's my notch. There's my notch. There's my notch. There's my notch. And this is the drop cheek rectangular elbow, also known as a transitioning elbow. And I am the draft doctor. Please hit the like. Please hit the subscribe. Hope you enjoy it.